from Pico's Bolodrome in Franklin, Massachusetts. It's New England Candlepins Winter Tournament 2014. In our first elimination show, Milford's Dan Gauthier rolls against John Cavallis of Providence. And in game two, our very own Ed Dunn faces off against challenger Phil Clough from Warren. Now let's roll with your host, Nick Remesong and Jay Horrigan. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to New England Candlepin Bowling. I'm Jay Horrigan, along with Nick Remesong. We're here today for our first show with our first bowlers of the day, John Kafalis and Dan Gothier. John, how are you today? I'm pretty good, ready to go. We'll have a good show, I hope. Okay, and Dan, how about yourself? A lot better than I was uh, last week. I had a stomach bug, but hopefully that's gone. Looking forward to bowling. Well, is I that th part I of the psych out here? You're, you're going to yeah, claim yeah. illness? I always all right. like to praise my opponent. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Well, just, just watch the handshaking. <laughs> hey, John, how are you feeling today? Oh, pretty good. I'm ready to go. Okay, no stomach bug or anything Not at like all. That. Not <laughs> okay. well, yeah, no, he's going to give it to me. You did shake. Oh, great. Okay, so it all appears right. that health-wise, everybody's good. Nick, you feeling well today? I'm peachy, just top of form today. Okay, and I, our crew uh, appears to be all fine today. So we're going to get ready to bowl now that the health-wise, everybody's doing well. Uh, so we're going to be back right after this with our first match of the day. Welcome back, folks, and we're ready for our first match of the day today on New England Candlepins. Up first is Dan Gauthier. Dan joins us today from Milford, Mass. He bowls out of the academy leagues. There you go, they got the lights on. Now we're set. So Dan's first shot there, picked up four pins. Another and three. He's got seven he's working on right now. Dan qualified today as our 14th seed. Almost to clean up, he ends with a nine. He's stepping over to the 16 lane now to roll his second frame. And does he get it? Oh, it is just going to hang on. See if he can clean this last pin up. Going for the mark. And he gets it. Little well comment done. there. He's continuing the uh, the trash talk. He started with the intestinal flu, and now we're talking about his weight. I would think Nick that intestinal flu would have helped the weight. I would think so, but sometimes it takes people the other way. You know, he, he could have right. chowed down. He could have been gobbling everything. Once you get over it, you tend to overeat. There you go. And I don't think that John was that intimidated. A nice powerful seven here for his first roll. John comes in today as our number three seed. Qualified with a total three game of three games with a 384. There he goes, and he's marked. That's our first mark of the day. You notice John's little shoe there. He's got a little, uh, little attachment on the bottom there. I'm going to, uh... Or maybe... Oh, there he goes. Oof. I'm going to defer to you on the uh, legality of that. That uh, may be a detachment. A detachment? No, it looks, looks like that's definitely an applique. There we oh, go. Oh, what a pickup. Nicely that done. That is a great pickup. Nice. <laughs> Back one falls. He picks up a six. And 
a nice mark, a nice spare. So Dan picks up two spares in a row. And picks up five pins in the fourth frame. A little off on that one. I think he was looking for that to fade a little bit to the left. Closer there and picks up three more pins. So after four frames, Dan got here at 47. Interesting fact about both our bowlers, great, great little story about them. They're both involved with uh, a program in Milford um, that used to be known as uh, Candle Pin for, kid, for Kids. It's a show that is broadcast on Nessa Neck, and it, it's, oh, yeah. it's now yeah. ca called uh, Candlepin New Generations. Great. Um, Bringing up the next generation of bowlers. Absolutely. Keeping the interest alive, that's great. They'll have their uh, oh. season premiere on Nessen, uh on February 5th at 5 o'clock. You so, were saying that goes for nine weeks, right? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Okay, yeah. good. But that's great for them to be involved with that, yeah. with the kids. So, two down the middle that didn't quite connect. So John in his third frame opened with an eight and was unable to pick up the spare. So he's got 41 through three, heading to his fourth frame. A nice explosive nine. You notice his uh, rag almost matches his shirt. It's kind of stylish. You know what? Yeah, yeah. John is the one it's that always done. does bring the style yeah, to the show. Does. We've been fortunate to have him That's on every yeah. tournament we've had so far here with New England Candle Pins. Really? And he picks up the spare. Nicely done. Well done by John. Another spare. So John in his fourth frame has 50 pins total, but he's also working on a spare. Almost again. Just can't get that last one down. Beautiful. There's a nice mark. And actually, John, I think on his uh, last uh, last frame fouled on that second one, so he picked up a nine. So he won't be working on the mark. Seven pins total. And that's lovely. Picks up all ten, so ten. that's a 70 through six frames for Dan Gothier. Coming to you live from Fico's Bolodrome in Franklin, Massachusetts today, as we have on they just keep falling. Our previous shows. Oh. Nice use of the wood. Not quite enough. Gonna try and pick up the 10. And he does. And he gets it. Nicely done. So it's close. John at 59 here at the end of uh, five. So we've got one pin separating our bowlers halfway through this first game. We do. That 
is a three pin knockdown. That, oh, Ooh. would have thought he would have gotten a little more action on that one. When he hit that first pin, though, it looked like not much was uh, mm -hmm. on no. that. And it all of a sudden turned it into a lot more. Three pins left here for John. Oof. Uh. Gets one of them. So it's an eight in the sixth frame. Leaves Dan with a three pin lead after six. There we go. Kind of clean straight back there. Now, continuing the fashion statement, you can see that uh, Dan is all in black, kind of keeping with his name, Gothier. He's Correct. just slightly Gothier than the next guy. He is. So he's all in black. That comment caused him to explode a nice shot, so he's got two left. And we can get a little Johnny Cash out of him later. Johnny Cash, the man in black? Yes. Um, might need a little more height for that. Picks up a nine. And I did not see him walk in with a guitar no, or anything no, no. like that. No. Plus, you know, Cash died. That's a good There's, point. Yeah, that, that, that is. is a good point. There you go. Picks up six there on lane 16. And you don't hear the rumors about Johnny Cash like you do about Coming Elvis. Coming back? No, no, Elvis and Jim Morrison, no. no By John. the way, it was on the front page of uh, the, the um, either the Sun or the Globe I saw in Stop and Shop. Um, Elvis looks really good. Elvis has been keeping himself in shape yeah. these, like, these last few He's years. He's actually younger than when he uh, died. I think that's something that happens. Yeah. Almost Just coming across. Just missed the head pin. So Dan Gothier, the man who is Gothier than most, has 88 pins through the eight. So that's crazy eights for Dan. Oh, I just realized. Thank that. you, thank you. You are a quick one. You have a razor whip. Well, thank you. Remember to take care of your waiters and waitresses. Yeah. Speaking of which, the cuisine here at Fico's is uh, is quite interesting. It is. B5 in the vending machine is one of my favorites. I will be Pack having of peanuts. Yeah. I will be having a Reese's peanut butter cup later. Oh. Now, nothing on that. It's a nice, tough shot for bowling. However, if this was football, that would have been a field goal. Good for three. But this is bowling. Remember? It is bowling. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. I'll defer to you on that also. Tough frame there. Comes up with a five. So going into the eighth frame, uh, John Kafalis is down seven pins. I just see those coming to go. They, they just Ooh. keep coming. There we go. And that was not, that slid out of the right side of yes. his hand there. He got a lot out of that for that not being his best shot. Yeah. He's got some wood here he can take advantage of. Oh, kind of deadened on that one. Just picked up one. He's got him nice and lined up, nice and tight. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. He gets the kick. Great shot. Got the 10. Great shot by John. He needed that mark there. Or the 10. My apologies. Dan stepping up with a six pin lead. And nice. Working an eight. Just waiting for that wood to settle. For those of you that may be new to our show, the bowlers have to wait for the, what is known as dead wood 
also a TV show that used to be on Marvelous HBO. Show. Yeah. Uh, to settle, because if that wood's moving and they use it to knock down the other pit pins, it's actually a penalty. Nothing there. And faded to the right on him. There he goes. And he picks up the 10. Leg trip on both of them. So Dan's going to start his 10th frame here. Got a little English on that one. He ends it with four. He's got four standing. Little delay in the ball return. Yep. Ball boy's back there. He's asleep. He's yeah. slow. It's early. Yeah, yeah. It's early in the day. Kid needs one of those uh, jolt colas, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, jolt, not a sponsor of our show. No. But they should be. Pin high. Oh, Beautiful nice spare. spare. That being an important mark for Dan. Yeah, this could put him over the top on this. It's going to force, I believe, John to mark at least once, there. maybe even twice. So he picks up a seven. So Dan finishes with a 115. Which Dan coming into today's match came in with a 117 average. So. so he's bowling close to his average. All right, John. Oh, come on. Little tough break on that one. Nice shot, though. More, a lot of life on that shot, mm -hmm. which he had. Uh, John Hatton had in the previous couple of friends. It's good to see Dan wasn't any worse for wear for that stomach flu that no. he had. Seems to have settled. Yeah. And he just picks up one on that. Mm. Gonna roll one down to get the wood out of the lane there. Get this lane cleared. So John, based on my math, which is not my strong suit. Now they don't call you Pythagoras. He's going to need a strike here. And, oh, jeez. Oh. That may have been John's best ball of the day. Yeah. So if he spears here, give him a hundred. He does spare. I think the best he can do is 110. 110. Based on my math, I think. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Let's we'll see what see. the computer says when we're done. Because I think he's going to get all 10 here. Oh. Look at the action. You tried to help. So you got a six. John's going to end up with a 106. Very nice game. Both, of them. Both gentlemen do very well. But we do have our first upset of the day. We have a 14 seed beating a three seed uh, with uh, Dan Gothier, the gentleman who's Gothier, Gothier than, than most. You. Yes. Beating John Kafalis, 115 to 106 here on New England Candlepins. And we'll be back. Welcome back to New England Candle Pins from Fico's Bowlerdrome here in Franklin, Massachusetts. And we're with our bowlers from our second show. And I'm with Phil Clough, and we're also here with Ed Dunn. Phil, welcome to our show. You're, uh, you're here Thank from you. Warren, Massachusetts, correct? Yes. Okay, welcome. Uh, have you bowled here at Fico's before? A few times, yes. Okay, 
Great. Uh, let me ask you, Clough, any relations to the British uh, poet Arthur Hugh Clough, author of Dipsicus? Not that I know. Not of. that you know. Would you like to? We can we can research that for you. That's another thing that we offer here at Franklin okay. TV. Uh, as well as kind of a little favoritism here, because we've got our other bowler, Ed Dunn, who you probably familiar to most of you from the other side of the table. Ed, how you doing today? I'm doing very well, Ned. No stomach problems we're going to be working with so far, no? Yes. I'm not going to disclose my health concerns right ah, now. <laughs> he's going to keep that one quiet. Well, that's good that we have no stomach issues. Uh, just so you know, we do have three gentlemen dressed in the same shirts today. And then we have Phil. There is no favoritism, though. We are pulling for Phil as well as Ed. We'll be pulling for both of them. We are going to try to get Phil a shirt like this. It may take a while, Phil. But um, you, you, we feel you earn it because you put up with the three of us together here. Well, Phil also uh, has a, a patch on his that he might want to keep, the uh, SPCBA Senior Pro Tour. Well, that, I would definitely want to keep that if I could steal it from so I mean, if I could earn uh, that from yeah, someone. Cool. So, okay, folks, we'll be back in just a moment with our second match of the day. I wish you both good luck, okay? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to New England Candlepins. We're ready for our second match of the show. And Phil Klo is up first. And his first shot. Picks up six pins on lane 16. And Jay, I just want to let you know that just like, much like my name, you're kind of scuffing up Ed's name. His name, it, uh, Phil's name, I'm sorry. It's Phil Clough. Clough. As in rough. Rough and tough Clough. And he comes out of the bogey lanes in East Brookfield. And he picks up the 10. Nicely done. Well, Ed, it wouldn't be a show if I didn't screw up a name. Yep, and you just did. My name's Nick. Jeez. <laughs> well, my name's Francis. Francis, good. And I'm going to lighten up. We'll call you Frankie. <laughs> there we uh, go. Little off to the right there. Left, right. That's why I wear rings to know which hand I'm talking That's about. That's very side. smart. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work. There you go. That was, oh, he's left himself a tough one here. Nice use of the wood to pick up the majority. He's got so a nine. 19 through two frames. Still coming out here from Warren, Mass. Qualified with a total three game, game total of 355, makes him the 11 seed. Ed Dunn coming in as the six seed. Opens up. With three pins. Mm -hmm. I expect Ed will be doing a little producing from the uh, lanes here. I don't know that we'll follow him, but he'll, he'll, he'll be producing anyway. <laughs> and that's a tough one. That's a tough one. That might be an Attleboro arch. Oh! Not quite. He ends up with an eight in that one. There we go. Oh oh oh, 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 oh. It just hangs oh. on, hangs oh. on. Young Ed there using kind of a Harlequin uh, cloth. Is, you know, yes, very Harlequin. Variegated. Nick, a lot of reference to books and poetry and reading. I don't know. I have no idea why. I don't, you know, I have no idea what I'm talking about most of the time. There we go. Spare. Picks up the spare. Ed Dunn. I, it, Nick, you come across like you know what you're talking about. My yeah. philosophy on reading and books is if anything's good enough, it'll come out in a movie. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oy. Six pins, tough spare. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not a pretty piece of uh, woodwork there. But, but, uh, he picks up two. All right, he's going to chip away at it. The way to do it. 
Oh, didn't fade quite enough. Comes up with an eight. This is Phil's first appearance in our tournament here. Oh, well, good. This is Ed's second appearance, Ed, mm -hmm. on our last set of shows. Oh, a nice bit pick of a up by and he Phil. still comes up nice. Ed did not participate in our first set of shows as he was battling a shoulder injury at that point. Ah, there oh, we go. Nice that up. was nice. Nicely placed, nice bit of use of the wood. Maybe Phil's ter first tournament here, but he seems to know quite a few people. He was talking with some of the other bowlers a little earlier. It's a very, the bowling community, very tight-knit community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think so. Ed. Coming up with a four on that one. Actually came up with a ooh, ooh, three. Leaves a seven ten. Yeah. Let's see if he was a chameleon. He could use opposing eyes. He could look at each side. That's a separately. great point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, ooh. gets one a little bit. Gets of the kill. ten pin. Yeah. I believe that's the ten pin. Ten pin. Or, or the seven. It's one or the other. Hey. The kid's waiting on yeah, his that, bowling balls, that, it appears. Again. That poor guy that pin back boy. there. I don't, oh. know. I, I don't know. I don't know. He's got nothing else to do but these two lanes. I, I'm wondering where it's a Saturday morning. Mm, if they were open. Friday night. Yeah. Mm, I'm wondering yeah. what. Maybe they had an after-hours party well, here. Well, that's the youth today. Yeah. You're going to be working. you got to go to bed early. Yeah. That was nice. That was nice. A nice looking seven. There we go. Oh. oh. That wood just wouldn't kick. And he picks up the 10. Nicely done for Ed. So Phil's working off a spare here in the fourth frame. Mm -hmm. And Picks he gets up five. a five. So through four frames, Phil will have a two point or two pin lead. 42-40. Oh, just slid by. Backside on that one. That's another tough looking setup. But he picks up the majority. It's a nice it's a pick nine. Up. Very nice. That's a difference, I think, Nick, between these bowlers and, well, not me, but got, <laughs> uh, people that come here and bowl. You know, being able to pick up those yeah. two pins there. Make the difference, yeah. yeah. They can make the difference, you're right. Another seven for Phil. Another tough seven, too. And he picks up the two again. He's got a shot at the 10. You know, they know right where to put the ball. Mm hmm To pick up when you have those tough, those two pins just back to back or. Right. And he gets the fade. That was nice. That was right on target. He picks up the 10. Going into his fifth frame. Working on 40. Mm. Tough five. Yep. Ooh, he gets the majority, almost got the kick. Almost did. 
Yeah. That was a nice shot. He's got a good piece of wood. Can really help him. It hits right. And he does nice it. Pick up. Another 10. So in the fifth frame, Ed gets all 10 pins down, where Phil got nine. So Ed picks up a pin in the fifth frame. So one pin separates our two bowlers halfway through this match. Yeah. Ooh. Little, uh, oh. And yet another and Jeez, look at that last one. So we've got seven. We've got three standing. He oh. got it. He talked to it. He convinced it. It's the spare. That's a great spare. Phil going down on his knees for an eight. That's a great shot by Phil after that yeah. spare by Ed. And he's he gonna gets pick the, up spare. the spare. That's a great answer back. Yes. And as the machine says, a sensational spare. Oh, that one not quite making it. Not quite as sensational? Not as sensational, no. A two is a uh, Sort of sensational. Two. No, no, no. No? Doesn't even get into this. Yeah, you're right. Two more. He's chipping away at this. up with a four so on that one. Through eight, Phil has 77, and Ed is working off a spare in the sixth frame. So Ed can pick up some ground. Well, he can take the lead easily here. Four on the spare. But that would give him the lead through six frames, a uh, three pin lead. Three pins, 64 61. That looked like a nice show. It's a couple more. Oh. And, and oh. he gets the 10. <laughs> We've got an involved crowd here today. Enthusiastic. That was a great pickup for Ed. That was. Nice He's a one pin lead in the seven. And an explosive eight. And that allowed him to Waiting build on his, on his lead. I want to correct myself on the fashion note on his rag. That is not a Harlequin rag. That is a Patriots rag. So he's rather timely. Looking ahead to tomorrow. Well, let's hope we don't have a Spygate issue. Ooh. No. No, he was going to use the wood. That just seemed to be a break in concentration there for Ed. Almost got the kick. Comes up with a nine. So, Ed with the nine. It's a through eight. Yeah. 83-77, Ed has opened up a six pin lead with two frames to go. Phil. Another two. Nice pin oh, high. Oh, Go the spare. It falls. Phil needed that spare. He did. And needs a big pickup and, here. Oh. And he picks him up. He picks, picks up eight up pins. Eight. That's a nice pickup on the spare. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Gets himself a nine on that. Oh, he's got one more. So Sorry. Phil Phil had that eighth frame where he only had four pins. Mm -hmm. And then came back in the ninth with a two and, and able to up pick, a 10. Up, pick up the spare and ends up with a 105. Now, see, that reminds me of something else. Toynbee's rise to challenge. It's the Arthur Toynbee's uh, theory, the rise to challenge. I wow. mean, you, you put him, back him against the wall, and like most dynastic re um, realms, he'll, he'll respond. Wow. I'm going to need an interpreter, please. <laughs> oh. oh, nice eight, but not a nice remain. So going into these last two frames, Ed's going to need 22 pins to tie, 23 to win. That's eight of them. That's going to lower it to less than 23. Mm -hmm. oh. There's nine of them. Can he pick up the last one for the 10? So he needs 14 more pins with four more shots. And he moves along nice nicely 10. with that 10. 13, he's gonna need a mark. In this last turn. Uh, he's got a nine on that. There was a foul. Oh, I think he used uh, the wood in the gutter. Yeah. I think he might have clipped that. Okay, so he's, he's gonna need either a strike or a spare here. Well, he's, he's got a good shot at the spare here. Does get a nine on that. So that's he's gonna, got one less. Is and be he, pick up, he picks up the ten. 105, 102. Another close game. Another very close match. And a nice close on that one. And the key to that is going to be the Phil Spare in the ninth frame. Yes. Where he just got two and then picked up the last eight pins. And that was timely. So again, another upset. We've had two upsets in this. First two games, yeah. yeah. An 11 seed beating a six seed. So, we're gonna be back with our, our championship match of this show shortly. We'll be back after this. Welcome back, folks, to New England Candle Pins. We're getting ready for our championship match uh, with uh, Phil and Dan today. Uh, Phil, I've got to ask you about that spare you picked up in the 10th frame. Coming off the 4 in the 8th frame, you knocked down two pins, and then you picked up the 8 for the spare. Yeah, I guess I got lucky. I thought it, I lucky. I thought it was just a great shot there. Well, it went, so. It, it did. It did. <laughs> Phil, a man of few words, though they do call him the poet. As opposed they to do. Dan here, the goth man. Yes. So that's what we've got coming up here in the championship match. Uh, anything you'd like to add, Dan? Just that uh, Phil pretty much taught me how to bowl when I was a kid, so it's going to be kind of fun bowling against him. I just hope he didn't save any secrets for the. You know. Now Phil claims you were in college, not actually a kid, but a little, little, a little longer in the tooth. I don't know. I seem to remember it being longer ago than that. <laughs> We'll, we'll see how that works. Kind of an Obi-Wan Kenobi yeah. Yoda type Yoda, thing going Yoda. on. And he would be Yoda? <laughs> yeah, I'd be Yoda. Yeah, a boy. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll be back after this to see this uh, championship match. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to New England Candlepins. Up first in our championship match is the goth man, Dan Gothier. Dan out of Milford, Mass. All right, picks up a four on that first roll. Ah. All right, three more. He 
He's working on six. Very doable 10. But he fades a little bit. Dan won our first game today against um, John Kefalis, 115 mm. to 106. That looks good. That there, and he did a it. Strike. Nice strike. Dan likes it too. We'll be following Dan closely for the next several weeks to see if the uh, the sobriquet of Golf Man sticks. And the poet, Phil. Poetry in motion. He's got a lot of wood there. Sometimes that wood can kind of hamper you, though. It doesn't quite yes. move the way it should. He's going to use it. The, uh, <laughs> it worked, it worked the one. right way there. It did indeed. Picks up a nice bear. So the poet picks up a spare in the first. Down on his knees again for a six and not a pretty looking thing. So this is the teacher against the student. Pick, oh, ooh. picks up two, but I would have thought he would have gotten the two that were aligned, but uh, got some action on that. And up. So picks Comes up, up with a nine. So through two frames, Phil has 25, and Dan's working off a strike in the second frame. Spare, actually, on that one. A spare. Thank there you. you. Go. My pleasure. And gets three on that. And just a reminder, Dan, coming into today, had been recovering from that nasty. Ah, yes, yes, yes. He's working that stomach flu for all it's worth. Dan. Oh, oh. <laughs> Backs up the spirit. Actually, I think that stomach flu may have been more like Ebola. Oh, maybe. Maybe the flesh eating bacteria? It could have yeah, been. Yeah. We are concerned. Oh, a six. Not that there are many out there, but Dan was related to John Travolta, the boy in the plastic bubble. I don't know if you ever saw that after school movie. No, I was kept did. after school most. Of the hey, there we go. Another spare. Three spares in the world. Doing quite well. I think the name Gothman's working for him. But you puzzle can, at the end there. For you can never. Phil count the teacher out as he showed in his last match. Oh. All right. Six so far. Put some English on oh. that for the 10. Nice job, That's Phil. That's the master coming through. Yes. There we go. Oh, 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 there's that 7 10 again. There we go. That's that the 7, seven ten. Okay. 10 split. A lot of wood in the middle. An entire fence, I would say. That's what it looks like. He went for the middle, and, and he. Oh, and he oh. just can't believe it. It's still wiggling. Unfortunately. And Got it. The ten. He picks up the 10. So through four frames, the poet Phil has 45 pins. Now his young Padawan. His young what? Padawan. That's from Cat Star Wars. Catawan. Yes. Not like a catamite, is it? No, it's like I'm in the Oscar sure. Wilde area there. We no, it's not. So it's it's Star Wars. That. Again, I stay away from the books. I go straight to the movie. movies. Yeah. Now, what happens with this? Oh. Ooh. 
And you figure it's got to be twice as good if they do a sequel? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So you know how good Star yeah. Wars is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Picks up a nine on that for Dan. So, so through five frames, Dan has 68. That on the strength of three marks in the second, third, yeah. and fourth frame. Very explosive here early on. And, and that and he comes up with a five. That looked like he caught the head pin straight on. Yeah, a little spaced apart here. Uh, not happy with that at all. Not at all. That might bring the Ebola back. Yeah. that illness here a little yeah. later on. So 74 through 6 for the goth man. Some good English on that. Good English. He's got a 7. Phil, great yeah. spare. Phil showing what he's made of. A spare in the fifth for Phil. He's working that spare. A little extra. Comes up with a five. Comes up with a four, I'm sorry. Phil. Got a shot at the 10. A little bit of a stutter there at the end. So, but uh, that gives Phil 68 through six frames, made this only a six pin match. Yeah, yeah. He's been recovering nicely. Closes with a nine on that frame. Just missed the head pin. Yes, he did. So through eight frames, Dan has a 90. Phil can pick up some ground here. Yeah. Picks up four there. Four. Got a bit of, bit of, bit of a gap there. Oh! oh. That was nice. That was nice. A very doable 10. Gonna let that wood settle. It's in the gutter, so it's out of play. And he, and he picks up the 10. Picks nice up a fade pin. on that. He got a nice fade. Yeah. So he picks up one pin in that frame on Dan. 
Makes it a five ten difference. Oh. oh. seven on that in the eighth which Dan had a seven total in the eighth so every pin here is a pickup only one it would hamper him just a little bit and again he's gonna need one of those pins to quick kick quite a bit in order to pick yeah. up the ten precision shot gets him one very so nicely he picks up done. two more, so now it's a three-pin difference. Three-pin difference going into the ninth and tenth frame for our bowlers. Dan's going to close out his game here. Another excellent match we've had today. Yes. Always good. Oh. Come on. Eight. Eight, ten. Yeah. Dan taking a good hard look at this one. He'd really like to pick up the spare. And it looked like neither the eight nor the ten mm -hmm. even moved. No. Just he was trying to catch that eight pin just on the outside and kick it over. The crowd trying to talk it through for him. Yeah. No. Ends up with an eight in that frame, not bad. So Dan going into the ninth frame at 98. And we've gotten the lane cleared, so he's ready to roll. So he could use a mark here. Would be extremely helpful. Again, just off okay. the head pin. Still picks up uh, four, four pins. Yep. Would be easier if I'd looked at the computer instead of trying to count. <laughs> it's that upper edition high. Oh, yeah. well, nothing down on that one. So you're you're still standing at four. He Oof. takes out the majority. He ends up with a 106, 106 with an frame. for Dan. Just so you know, our, our uh, winners and runners on both cash out in uh, our tournament today. Winners receive $75. Nice shot by Phil. And our runners up receive $25. It's nice. And then we've got the champion, the champ, the match of champions at the end, where they can pick up substantially more. Yes, the winner of uh, today's show does advance to our championship, where the eventual winner wins three hundred and twenty-five dollars. The runner-up wins seventy-five dollars in our championship show. It Oof. does go down. He gets the ten. All right. So. Going in with a 97, one pin behind. Gets a good kick for a he gets six. six. So he needs three pins to tie, four to win. Yeah. For the teacher. And he gets one of, one them. of them. This All is right. gonna come down to the last shot. And two of those pins are directly one, two, right in that front right of each other. other. That's what he's going for. And he gets two he of gets them, and we have got a tie. tie. 106. 106 Nicely to 106. Battled. And this is our first tie on New England candle pins. So what we normally do on a tie, because we've had none of them before, each player will get a sword, and we will fight to the death. Ah. There'll be blood on the lanes. No, we do rock, paper, scissors. No. We do a, a two box roll off. Yeah. Bare knuckle. I think bare knuckle bare fist. Bare knuckle, yep, yeah, John L. Sullivan style. Yes. That looks yeah, tough. Get... Fake. Well, he finally got that head pin he's been yeah. searching for. <laughs> 
Alright, he's got a three. He's working a three. Yeah. Lost control. That of the just last came out of the hand yeah. early. Yeah, I yeah, it sounded like. Kind of smacked the wood. That was a smooth roll. Ooh, ooh. So. A five. He's going to end up with a five in the first frame. So the goth man up here mm -hmm. picks up three. Three. So, Nick, I've got to say, I'm honored to be with you in our first ever two box roll off. Well, you should be, probably. It's, you know, it's, it's kind it's, of a, it, a it moment. It's kind of an honor for you, yeah. It is yeah. a moment that I will cherish at least for the next 10 minutes or so. That's good. Well, you understand if that you can. If not the rest buy, of my life. Yeah. And you can buy a DVD, $20. Yes. You can take that home, show it to the wife and kids. And as I say, at my You might earn games, a little respect. They might you, they might look at you a little differently If you now. do want a DVD, it is $20. If you want my voice deleted off it, it's $30. Uh, there oh. we go. He picks up a 10. All right. Nice job. 15 in his two box roll off. All right. The poet steps up. Mr. Clough. Picks up a five. Picks up a five, so we're kind seeing of a bit of a pattern here. Puts the poet in control. That, that looked, oh, there we go. Three more. So he's, uh, he's got eight pins, needs seven that. more. Yeah. He got a, he got the nine. All right. Six Boy. more pins. Oh, that one passed in front. Six will tie, seven will win. And that's it. That will do it. That will do it. Just roll this out. We'll let Phil finish this frame. Yes. And he pick he finishes the spare with a spare. Up. Nicely done. Nicely done. So Phil will finish out with a victory here. Uh, one. 26 to a uh, 121 with math there. Yeah, you I did squinted on that one too. So, 121 to 116. Phil is our victory here in our championship game, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to New England Candlepins. We just finished up our championship match. We're here with our champion, Phil. Phil, congratulations. Great job in that match. Uh, thank you. Uh, the scores wasn't that good, but uh, fortunately I came out on top. Well, the excitement was, and we had our first ever uh, two-frame roll-off there. We had our first tie at the end of 10 frames. Yeah, yeah that was exciting with my old buddy. That was yeah, fun. Yeah. I, I still think uh, we should have gone to a sword fight. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. that would have added yeah. a little more drama, but still, it was fun. Yes, it was. It was nicely done, Dan. I know you didn't feel you weren't happy with that close there, but uh, still, you, you battled nicely. I fell into the same trap I've been in for the last month now, where I have a streak of good boxes, I'm making a couple of nice shots, and then some atrocious boxes and uh, the one thing I tell the kids I have to learn myself you got to get nines and tens you can't keep yanking the ball and leaving sixes and sevens and making it easy well I want to say Phil made a great pickup on the last box he did he, he did punch those two pins because that was would have been easy to just pluck one there and uh, so I was scared once he did that because I knew I wasn't throwing a good ball so I hope he I wish him luck in the finals so I hope we can keep it up good good well and I want to uh, congratulate you as the runner-up nice. there's the $25 in cash just to buy some lessons <laughs> <laughs> well you can buy whatever you want or you can buy socks to match the shoes that might be an idea you want to consider well and Phil is our champion uh, it does move on to our championship series where we'll find three other bowlers where the four will compete for our overall series champion where that winner will win 
$325. Phil is our winner today, does win $75. So congratulations on that, Phil, and we look forward to seeing you back in our champion sh show later on. Thank you. I'll be here. And I did want to remind everyone out there, if you do enjoy what you've seen today, enjoy the bowling, yeah. and you want to do something to support us, I ask you to go to your local cable access channel and volunteer there. We're always looking for volunteers to help produce shows, come up with your own shows, do anything you can to help out. And for uh, Nick Remingsong, I'm Jay Horrigan. Close. I'm close enough. Rick, uh, Nick, what's your last name? I haven't gotten a name right like all spell. day. Just okay. like a spell. Okay, I'm just going to say I'm Jay, that's Nick, and go. we're out of here. Have a good day. Thank you. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.